folks, the czar here, happy new year. Uh, the video you were about to watch was recorded before the final version of the FCC's ruling was published. As a result, we missed two things that are very important for you to keep in mind as you watch this video. First, uh, it's not a six-month delay before the ruling goes into effect. It is 12 months, uh, which is a really big deal. And second, I think more importantly, uh, there's a new public notice proceeding that's out there where if you are going to be impacted by this rule and you're a small business, the FCC wants to hear from you. Uh, there may actually be modifications made to this rule, or maybe the rule will be rolled back in some form or fashion, but it depends on if small businesses come forward and have their voices heard. If you want to participate in this new public notice proceeding and potentially help business to push back against this rule, uh, feel free to reach out to us at troutmanamine.com, uh, or of course reach out to REACH, Responsible Enterprises Against Consumer Harassment, the big trade organization for the lead gen industry now. Uh, that is REACH. MBC, Mutual Benefit Corporation, reach mbc.com. For now, Happy New Year and enjoy the show. And welcome everybody to the 20th edition of the Deserve to Win podcast. As always, I'm your host, Eric J. Troutman, the czar, as you saw in the back of my pajamas, of the TCPA, coming at you from Louisville, Kentucky, from the big holiday party, which is going to take place here in an hour and a half, and we're squeezing in a podcast, and the girls are really excited that we're doing this. Uh, check this out. Boom. Troutman Amin branded silk pajamas. I don't know what we're thinking, but we're having fun. Uh, today is a very special episode, of course. We're coming at you from the holiday party, and we're breaking down the biggest news in TCPA world, maybe history, the big proposed now final ruling by the FCC looking at closing the lead generator loophole. We're going to be talking about this the entire time from different angles. Before we get to that, who do I have with me? Queenie? Hey folks, Queenie here. I can't, I can't turn. It was a smooth turn. It was a smooth turn. Queenie here, a partner at Troutman Amin LLP. Happy to be here and so excited for our special Guests. This is a really special edition. We do have special guests. This is an unusual kind of program. We're only talking about one subject. And uh, again, special location. And we have some special guests, different format. Uh, shall we introduce the rest of the team, though, before we move on? Sure. Who do you have to your left? Who do I have to my left? Hello, everyone in TCPA world. I'm the Duchess, coming to us from Kentucky. Uh, and I am Angela Kamunger. I'm a paralegal here at Chapman and Mean. The Hello, fantastic Duchess. And by the way, you had the best turn so far of any of us. Uh, and I love having you here. Uh, and last but not least, all the way down to my right. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> trying. So I'm the Countess Jennifer Cabrera. I'm from our Boca Raton office in Florida. I, I am so excited to have Jennifer with us in the flesh. We literally only here since last year. Yeah, yeah, we only get her like once a year on the podcast. Yeah, I swear. A holiday party. We need to do more parties. Yeah. Well, I think we par I think, I think we party plenty. Uh, <laughs> we're totally excited. So we're going to introduce some more special guests in a minute. But Pooja, I think we need to dive in. Let's do it. Um, so the biggest news, of course, I was right. I was right. I was right. I was right. Was I right? You were right. I was right. <laughs> uh, so look, we all know uh, over a year ago now, I came out in TCPA world and I said, hey guys, listen, the, the, the public knowledge, very, very powerful special interest group out there in DC has asked the FCC to say that you cannot transfer consent, that all web form consents should be illegal. And I sounded the alarm. And nobody listened at first, except for Mike Faree. Mike Faree got me onto one of his webinars, and I told everybody, guys, listen up. This is a big deal. A very powerful special interest group out there is saying that, that really you should not be able to enforce web form consents at all. And wouldn't you know, an NPRM proceeding was begun in February, right on the heels of my announcement. The FCC, true to form, comes forth with an NPRM looking at whether or not to shut down the lead generation industry. And wouldn't you know it, despite the fact that I said this was going to happen, mm -hmm. what did people say? Oh, don't listen to the czar, right? Can you believe these people? So let's just like stop for a second, right? I've been advocating in front of the FCC for 12 years. It's like a major component of what I do for a living. I follow this incredibly closely. I am so plugged in over there. And you've got these knuckleheads that know nothing. They, they know nothing about the subject matter. They've never been informed of the commission. They don't talk to anybody out there. And these guys are out there saying, oh, Eric doesn't know what he's talking about. Can you imagine this? I mean, this is the most frustrating thing in the world. I'm trying to help people, and you've got these people who know, no they know nothing. And they're just out there saying, oh, Eric's wrong. Like, I was like, I'm just making stuff up. Um, so as you would expect, the NPR and proceeding went forward. I, I said that folks should come out and comment. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and very, very few companies came forward in the comment proceeding. Uh, and as a result, uh, on November 22nd, by the way, didn't I call November for the ruling? Yep. Did I call that? 2024. Um, November 22nd, uh, the commission comes out now with what was a proposed ruling, and wouldn't you know it, one-to-one -one consent is now going to be the rule. We're going to break this down. We're going we're to look at all of this. Uh, and then, I, of course, I called that this would pass. And, of course, it did pass on December 13th, the open meeting. Uh, today, as we sit here, less than a week from that date, uh, this is now going to be the rule moving forward. Massive change, massive. Uh, today, currently, as we talk, probably, and I'm going to say probably because this is the second piece we have to break down. Probably, if you have a web form that has a hyperlink with, say, 50 or 100, even 5,000 marketing partners on that list, as long as the consumer clearly and conspicuously, following the Troutman 9, agrees to receive contact from all these individuals, that is probably today an enforceable disclosure. That disclosure can be sold as a lead, and lead buyers, most importantly, can rely upon that lead as express written consent, regardless of whether or not your phone number is on the DNC list. That is today. And as we know, hundreds of thousands, millions of leads a day, a day are sold, and millions of calls a month are made in reliance on the express written consent doctrine that exists under the current law, and all of that has been shattered and thrown out the window with the FCC's new ruling that actually the consumer has to not just agree to receive calls from a huge group of people, but only from one specific seller that is a good or service provider, one brand, one company, and only one company has to be ex specifically selected by that consumer, and then that lead can be sold ultimately only to that one company. Massive, massive change. Pooja, thoughts? Well, thoughts. Um, and then can I also add that the one-to-one cons -one consent is not the only thing. Yeah, keep going. Happened. Yeah, sure. So there was, that's the one ruling that we're going to break down that Eric just did a fine job breaking it down. There's three other components to it that are, two of them are at least equally as important in my opinion. Um, the three additional ones are, the first one is FCC just ruled that the TCPA's DNC regulations now apply to text messages. As us TCPA attorneys understand and you are used to, we've already treated text messages as calls under the TCPA DNC rules. So that one's kind of a no-brainer for most of us. Not going to have that much impact, I don't think. Um, number three is the consent where the consent is acquired. Now the, it has to be logically and topically related. What does that mean? Do you know what that I means? Know what that means? I have no idea what that means. No. So, um, you know, just, just you, you know, I foresee more litigation around the logically and topically related because it is very, very gray. The FCC has kept it gray. Therefore, the plaintiff's bar is going to take advantage of the gray area. Oh, there's the so much to take advantage there's of here. So much. Oh, my God. Um, and then lastly, now, when, you know, right now, present day, consent records, right? Your active prospect trusted form or your Janaya or whatever you're using to capture TCPA consent now has to be acquired by the buyer before you make the outbound call. The end seller, so the lead buyer now has to retain that documentation um, instead of the publisher or the lead seller. Um, so that, that's a massive change. It's gonna impact so many buyers. So many of our clients are gonna be impacted with this new ruling and understand now Plaintiff's bar can sue based off of any four of the violations of any of these four new rulings. So now you know you already have the ATDS issues that you know we've 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 seen a few years ago. Then you have the DNC issues that we've seen, and now you're going to see litigation around these four additional requirements. So, so the question I'm getting all the time is, well, what happens if you continue to buy a lead of the sort that you had before? Like, what what happens? Continue to buy the lead? What do you yeah, mean? you keep making lead, you keep buying leads that you just same kind you had before. After the FCC right. ruling becomes effective, you make calls in reliance on the previous lead. What's the what, what happens? You get sued. Okay. You're in violation of the TCPA now. It's as, as simple as that. Yeah. If you are using and relying on all your old old data, your age data, all those leads that are out there in the ecosystem right now are dead. Are dead. So, so the day before the NPRM becomes effective. We're going to talk about that here in a second, okay? because we've got one year for you. We went to battle on behalf of REACH, Responsible Enterprises Against Consumer Harassment, uh, and through our efforts, we were able to effectuate a number of important changes, what we're going to talk about here in a second. But the, just important to keep in mind, the day this thing becomes effective, right? Let's say it's a Tuesday. 
<laughs> on Monday, you can keep doing what you're doing right now, relying on these leads, making outbound calls and reliance on the multi-party leads. That's Monday. Tuesday, if you make those exact same phone calls, they're illegal, and you just violated the TCPA. It's a huge and massive change. Speaking of huge. Today. Oh, what were Go you? Go ahead. No, oh. I had something different. Um, I'm going to throw this question to the Countess. Um, when does this ruling going take place? What new news did we receive today? So we have now instead of six months, which is what was discussed on December 13th, and now it's going to be 12 months. So as long as you're compliant within the 12 months, you have 12 months to pivot and prepare for that. For those of you that did not heed the SARS warning, <laughs> you got 12 months now to move forward and try to figure out how can I pivot the business to have one-to-one -one consent. For those of you that did, you're already ahead of the game. Yeah, you know, it, it is frustrating, actually, you know, because we work so hard to get people more time. Maybe we shouldn't have given them more time. You, you got 12 <laughs> hours, because those of you that listen to the czar, you would have known to do the right thing. But what I was going to say, actually, is we've got uh, our first special guest appearance here, um, a very dapper gentleman who uh, joined us recently. You should be moving toward your mark now. <laughs> this is your cue. Uh, and we love this guy. His name is Connor. Come on out, Connor. And uh, he's uh, showing off his digs. This is what he's wearing to the Christmas party momentarily. This is a good looking fella. We've got a, we've got a very handsome, a handsome fella. Duke, uh, the Duke, our powerful Duke. Thank you so much for being here, Duke. Look, really excited to have you stopping by. Thank you. We're going to have some more special guests here in a second. That was very exciting. That was so, good. Um, so it, it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, Countess, or, sorry, Duchess. Yes. Uh, can you break down some of the practical impacts of the new one to one consent regime compared to kind of where we're at today? Like, practically speaking, what do lead generators and lead buyers need to be keeping in mind? So today, I think a lot of maybe even how we kind of got into this mess is a lot of like cross, everyone wanted to like maximize the lead, right? And they wanted to like use it in all sorts of verticals. How can, if you, I'm signing up for a mortgage, I probably need a walk-in tub. No, you don't. No, you don't. So, you know, that's part of where the, 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 the notice and um, the rule, right? And the order, I'm sorry, came in and um, you can only have one, or uh, Topically and logically related. I'm sorry. <laughs> Consent. So um, if someone is looking for a mortgage, that's specifically what they're looking for. Now, maybe you might be able to give them the opportunity of selecting multiple mortgage companies. Like maybe they're going to, you know, do a Wells Fargo and they're going to do a Chase and a Loan Depot. However, that's not going to cross over into other, they don't want solar. They don't want the bathtub. Not like, you know, everyone was trying to kind of maximize the, the consumer. And, and then they were getting not only Lee, uh, calls from the mortgage companies, they're getting then calls from all these other verticals, right? And so they were getting like hundreds of thousands of calls and it's kind of what how we ended up in this mess it's really a disaster uh, so again focusing on one-to-one -one, it is critically important for you to understand that the ultimate good or service provider the brand wells fargo capital one loan depot they have to be on the form but not just on the form they already have to be on the form mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. they have to be selected individually one by one by that consumer now you could have multiple names on the form still. I assume so. There has to be a checkbox, right? And that consumer has to still check each and every one. We think pre-check boxes. Are we going to go there? Probably not. No. I don't think so. I think that's pretty dangerous. Um, now, there might be options, though, for instance, with like a little select all toggle at the top, right? You've got five options. There's a select all. Maybe they click the select all. It has to be small, though. What you can't do is have this giant select all right down at the bottom. Select all or hear from all. And then like a little tiny... Uh, you know, choose one by one option, right? You got to be careful with these things. You know, people are going to be create, you know, creating these really problematic forms. Um, so, so one piece to keep in mind, right, is the form. We got to think about the new form that you're going to be looking at. Another piece to keep in mind, though, and we're hearing this all the time, all the time, is call centers want to put their name mm -hmm. on the form because they're like, hey, we're the seller, right? We're selling the lead. So, does that work? What do you guys think? Absolutely not. Because the seller is not defined as the lead seller. The seller is defined as the end uh, provider of the goods or services that are being sold. So you have Wells Fargo who's giving you the mortgage. You have Loan Depot who's giving you the mortgage, not Joe's call center in Alaska. Um, they're not the ones who are able to provide you the mortgage. It's whoever can provide you the goods or services that the consumer is looking uh, to purchase. That, that name needs to be on the form and yeah. individually selected. Now, does that mean there can't be intermediaries? There can be. The warm transfers, you know, the whole way, uh, warm transfer regimens will still stand. Um, it, it's, 
you know, as long as the end seller is named in the consent, the warm transfer can, uh, partner can still stand and transfer that call over to the end buyer. And that's the important thing to keep yeah. in mind, right? What you cannot do is be the marketer, the intermediary, and put your name on the form and think that you can then make that outbound call, get the consumer qualified, and then decide after the fact mm -hmm. who you're going to transfer the call to. You cannot. That is dead. That model is dead. If you do that, as a lead buyer, do not buy from those people. And as a lead seller, do not do that. You're going to be selling illegal product. You don't want to do that. Instead, if the, cons if the uh, company's name is on the form, Wells Fargo, you can then call as the intermediary marketer to qualify that consumer, just like you're doing today, but only on behalf of Wells Fargo. Right? That's the change. That's the big change. Is when you're calling now, you're calling on behalf of Wells Fargo. You're not calling as you know, Bob's Mortgage Shop and then connecting the consumer with Wells Fargo or Chase or somebody else. You're calling only for Wells Fargo. Uh, which brings us to another topic. What about Allstate? Right? Let's think about uh, a big brand that has independent companies out there <coughs> that will sell their product. Um, what do you think, Countess? If the name Allstate alone is on the form and you've got independent agents that sell Allstate, can those independent agents call or do, do they have to have the independent agent's name on the form? What do you think? So I think this gets a little bit more trickier. The fact that it's an Allstate agent that is going to contact the consumer and the service or good is going to come from Allstate, then that would be okay because it, it, the good or service is coming from Allstate. That's the big question, right? Um, now, under this model, just because everyone kind of goes up from Allstate or maybe just funnels down to Allstate, however you want to look at it, the end goal is that the consumer knows who's going to be contacting them because that is who is going to provide the good or service for them and that is who they want to be contacted by. Not anyone else, just Allstate in that scenario. Fantastic. I love it. Great breakdown and I completely agree. And look, most lawyers are not going to be out here on the limbs like we are, right? <laughs> we're going to come out and just tell you our view because I think we're right. But notice there's a difference, right? In the Allstate scenario, Jen, the Countess, put her finger directly on it. Allstate is the seller. They're the seller. They're the ones providing the good or the service, right? They are the insurance company that's providing the product the consumer wants. Now let's look at a franchise model, right? Different result. Think of Keller Williams. Think of a big real estate franchise, right? They're just a name. The actual company providing the good or service is not the mothership. It's the individual franchise location. When you go to your local McDonald's, right, you're not buying anything from McDonald's, the franchise. You're buying something from Bob's McDonald's LLC who's selling you that hamburger. And it's the same thing in the real estate context with Keller Williams. You're not buying anything from Keller Williams. You're buying it from the local real estate franchise. But you know what? Before we break down first party issues, which is where we're going next, I think we see a couple of new <laughs> special guests. Uh, yep, here they are, the real associates of Orange County. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Baroness. Yeah. Hey, Dave. Oh. Welcome to the show. Yeah. We love these two. Of course, Brittany Andres and Tori Guidry, but they're always on the podcast. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, we, we love you swinging by girls. You look lovely. I cannot wait to see you in your outfits in a bit. You guys are amazing. You always steal the show. Uh, so glad to have them. We're going to have one more special guest for you. You're really going to love here in a second. All right, so those are third party issues, right? When you're selling a lead and you're buying a lead from a third party. But here's the really actually what I think is going to be the most enduring change is first party. First party. And okay, so look, what third party lead generation, we've been talking about this, right? You're somebody else is out there, they're a digital marketer, performance marketer, they've got websites, they're buying leads, they're buying content, sorry, not leads, they're buying uh, you know, uh, search ads, uh, they're, they're driving traffic to a, a landing page, they're generating a web form or a, a warm transfer, they're selling it, right? We've talked about how all that's gonna get changed. But what about if you are not buying, you're not Wells Fargo buying from LendingTree, you're Wells Fargo. Mm -hmm. And someone goes on to wellsfargo.com. Right? Now, if you go onto wellsfargo.com right now, what you will see is a disclosure that says something like, you know, I consent to receive calls from Wells Fargo Bank NA on all of its subsidiary and affiliate companies, right? right? The mothership and then all of the subsidiary and affiliates. That is the way we are programmed right now. If you go to any big enterprise, their disclosures read more or less the same way. The mothership and then all of its affiliated babies and friends and pals and kids that are related from a corporate standpoint <laughs> are allowed to make contact with you as a result of this disclosure. This is very, very common. I mean, literally, we encounter this literally nine to ten times a day, each and every one of us. That has now been changed completely because the definition of seller looks at the entity, singular, that is providing the good or service the entity, and each one of these little sub-affiliate LLCs 
are individual entities. That means for one of these big companies, if you're a Wells Fargo, if you're a Disney, if you're a Coke, if you're one of these big conglomerates, you now need to not fall back on what you've been doing right now, just getting that big broad consent and whoever, whatever div operating division or subsidiary is, is responsible for making those calls that day can call. No, now you need to be thoughtful. Now you need to figure out, well, my goodness, what am I selling here specifically? And if you've got a large portfolio of products and different of your entities are selling different components, wow, are you in trouble? Because right now you can share that, no problem, shared lead in a first party space, and that is all out the window because that consumer has to pick one and only one of your subsidiary LLCs, LL, like whatever they are, one to provide consent to at a time. That is massive, mm -hmm. just a massive change. What do you think, Duchess? I mean, it's, it's going to be tricky, I think, for people to kind of understand and realize that there are different companies under an umbrella, but they're not the same. They're same, but different. You know, and so that it's going to be tricky for them to realize that that customer is not a customer of all of those entities. It's a customer of one of the entities. Well, it goes back to what you were just saying a second ago, Countess, but it's a counterintuitive response, right? Because as we talked about Allstate being the mothership, providing the good or service, the consumer expects to receive a call from, mother, uh, from the mothership from Allstate, but because these third parties are making the phone calls, that's okay because, again, the seller entity is still Allstate. Here, it seemingly is the same issue, but we have a different result. The consumer is still expecting to hear from Wells Fargo, right? They don't care exactly what entity. Is it Wells Fargo Financial, Wells Fargo Mortgage LLP, or, or LLC, or, or Wells Fargo Bank NA? They don't know. They don't care, right? They want to hear from Wells Fargo about the product or service they're looking for. But Wells Fargo's got a problem because they don't get to live happy like Allstate, which is the entity providing the good or service. Only one of these operating subsidiaries is going to provide that good or service. I mean, what, what do you think here, uh, Queenie? Big deal. Well, in certain contexts, it makes sense, right? You take a Disney, for instance, right? If I'm signing up for Disney+, Plus, I'm only interested in watching the new Marvel movies, uh, you know, on a Friday night. Do I also want to be contacted about Disneyland tickets? No, right? So it makes sense in certain contexts on the first party side to me. In the Wells Fargo context, much more difficult because you have different entities of Wells Fargo providing mortgage. The consumer is looking for mortgage. So it's, it's, I understand the intent behind it and the impacts it's going to have on the first party um, uh, consent providers, but it's, it, it makes sense. It makes sense, right? You look at what the FCC's intent is and that their intent is for consumers to stop getting unwanted calls. All right, well, we're gonna pivot over to logically and topically here in a second. Before we do that, I wanna introduce you all to Sayla <laughs> Moon. No. And I'm just kidding, that's not her name. <laughs> Hi. This 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 is Sayla. We love Sayla. Sayla is my assistant, the firm's assistant. She's incredible. She's amazing. Uh, and she's just wanted to say hi. Hi, Sayla. We love you. Uh, and, and as you can tell, folks, this is a really exciting time of year for us because it's the only time of year, literally, that every single member of the team, there are 10 of us now, can get together and all be in one room. I sit here. I see one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine. And Kelsey's over there in hiding. Kelsey's a special animal. We got we to tend to her cautiously. We're going to have to <laughs> coax her out onto the stage. She's not ready yet, it's, but that's okay. Um, but we love this time of year. Okay, let's talk about logically and topically related. I want to stick into the, to the first party context for a second because right. you brought up mortgage. And I think this is a great example. If you go to a website and you want to hear about a 30-year fixed mortgage, mm. can the mortgage company offer you a 501 arm? No. Well, you can, but I promise you that the plaintiff's bar is are going to bring these actions, right? They're going to be the TCPA actions trying to fight against it. Um, it it's going to make sense to a lot of mortgage providers. If there's a better product out there, you're going to want to help the consumer obtain that better product, especially in the mortgage space. However, the plaintiff's bar is going to eat this up, and they're going to look for gaps and holes that don't make sense to them in order to sue you. And this, this is, look, this is where it really gets to be eye of the beholder stuff. Stuff, right? 30 year fixed versus 501 arm. Are these the same product? Is this logically and topically related or is it completely distinct? I personally think that they're logically and topically related, but I could see the argument. I think a reasonable juror could say no. A 501 arm is a completely different product looking to a completely different consumer than a 30 year fixed, right? But let's go a step further in abstraction. Let's say that we agree that a 501 arm is topically and logically related to a 30 year fixed, right? What about a HELOC? Right? Let's say, you know what? 
the consumer, you, you can't get a, a 30-year fixed mortgage for your new house, so why don't you just stay in your current house and uh, maybe just refinance to a lower interest rate and take out 100000 bucks while you're at it? Uh-huh. What do you think, Pooja? Not as logically and topically related as the first example. You know, and then you even further removed, what about personal loans? Exactly. Right? Um, are those going to be, though, that personal loans, absolutely not, in my opinion. Well, and this is what happens, though, right? And those of you that are listening to this, you need to hear this, right? Because there's such an echo chamber that I, I get concerned with in, in the lead generation world. Because I've already heard so many people, like beyond a straight face, are saying, no, it's all lending products, mm-hmm. Czar. It's all related. And I'm looking at them, and it's like, You've got to be kidding yourself when you come up with this, right? No, no, Eric, this is all logically and topically related. And it, it's not even like, is there an argument? It's like, no, plainly this is. And, you know, I get it. Like, you could make an argument that if consumers are looking for a mortgage product, that that is a lending product, and therefore any lending product is logically and topically related. Like, I get what you're saying, but no, Right? Like, you've got to be honest with yourself. And, and more than honest, like you've got to be vicious with yourself right now. I mean, this is a, a high target environment. This is a new world with the piranhas, right? We've been feeding these guys chunks of flesh for years, these plaintiff's lawyers in this space. These are like mutated super sharks. They're like not normal sharks. They've been like fed nuclear waste for years. And then they, they just brought in the, like, they just turned all of you into like, just like blood, like just everything, like dri- it's just like frothing, <laughs> frothing. I mean, it's frothing, and it's like yeah, some some you know Christmas edition of piranha or something, where all the piranhas have these little hats on, but they're just like ready to go, right? And and you're like yeah, I'll just be the guy that cuts the net and falls in. No, you don't want to do that. You want to be super conservative. You want to be looking down at that, saying I don't want anything to do with that mess down there right now. And you really you don't. So you've got to be conservative, right? And this is true, right, even first party. That's why I want everyone to understand. Even first party. Like, these are not third party issues, right? If you're an enterprise and you're watching me and you love the czar, and of course you do, you got to be asking yourself, man, this guy's, this guy's right, right? We are right about this. You know, to, in today's environment, you can take that lead, you can ingest it into your ecosystem, and you can transfer it to all of your different operating arms, and you can try to sell related products, right? And that's fine today. But it's not fine when it has to be topically and logically related. And not everyone's going to agree that a home loan is in any way topically and logically related to a deposit account or to a uh, refinance or to a you know, personal loan or a credit card or anything else, right? Just because these are financial products does not mean that they're related to each other. And of course, as you zoom out right, to the third party context, it gets even murkier and more difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, you just, wow, do we have to be very responsible at this point and very conservative? Yeah, and it, it came as a result of the dark pat- pattern habits, right? So before, you know, all, all, so many lead generators were using dark patterns to generate the lead. Now the FCC has said you can get sued for using dark patterns. It, it, now it's as bad as calling someone who's on the DNC without consent. It's as bad as using an ATDS without prior express written consent. So your web page layout now matters, and you can now get sued for that. That's insane. All right, so we're going to save the biggest, most important topic here for the end. Before we get there, 2024, big things coming from Troutman Amin LLP. By the way, 2023, the year we created the firm. Already, in less than one year, think about our accomplishments. We've got a fantastic magazine that everybody loves. Obviously, we have this podcast. We've had so many webinars. Mm-hmm. We've got a swag store where you can go and purchase all of our <laughs> awesome swag. We've got like a, a, a wonderful conference that people love to attend. We pump out so much fantastic so, so much fantastic content, so many awesome engagement tools. You know, we already have more followers on YouTube than like all these big law firms. <laughs> we already, you know, this year we're going to have twice as many unique visitors on TCPA World than we had last year. That is insane how fast we're growing. And as we move into 2024, there's going to be so much more engagement. In fact, you should get right now, if you are watching this, you should email me and say, Eric, I want to be on the list. I want the 2024 TCPA year-end review presented by Contact Center Compliance. How excited are we to be teaming up with Ron Allen and those guys? Speaking of Ron Allen, he's on the cover, uh, coincidentally, actually, (laughs) of Deserve to Win, Issue 3, the magazine. And this is all coming out in January after we get off the stage at, wait for it, Troutman Amin LLP (laughs) stage at Lead Generation World. I mean, we are everywhere. We are absolutely everywhere, except for the next two weeks. I'm going to be off, man. (laughs) I'm going to be sleeping my long winter's nap uh, on the solstice, and I'm really, really excited. But the last thing we got to talk about, um, anything else you want to talk about 2024? Like such a great initiative in 2024. All right, last topic, very important, is 
the, um, the FCC's ruling is actually masking one other really kind of critical battle that's yet to be fought, uh, which is there's a kind of a loophole in the center, ironically, of the order that was supposed to close the loophole on lead generation. It actually opened a giant loophole, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. Uh, I don't want to dive too deep into this, but there's two different levels of consent that are required under the TCPA. One is looking at regulated technology. That's the definition of prior express written consent. The second is looking at calls that are, are uh, consent that's needed to call numbers on the DNC, which is prior express written invitation or permission. Now, previous to the, NC, uh, excuse me, to the FCC's ruling, these two definitions were read to be identical by the courts. Now, however, big difference. The FCC modified only the express written consent rule, leaving intact the previous paradigm for prior express written invitation or permission. That is, the new rule only applies to the use of regulated technology. It does not apply to manual calls to numbers on the DNC. That means, in theory, that leaves open a huge loophole. You can keep buying the old leads that you have today, just use Safe Select, right, or Drips Initiate product, a product that is not an ATDS, and you can keep calling those numbers even if they're on the DNC. Well, that is a huge loophole, right? So the marketers out there must be thinking, well, this is fantastic stuff. We're running around in a circle. Um, and the answer is, to that is, is maybe, maybe. But, there's an, but there's a big asterisk big there. Asterisk. Because the reason, perhaps, that the FCC left this, and we don't know this, but the reason, perhaps, the FCC left this hanging out there was as a trap, as a trap, uh, because the NCLC <laughs> and 28 state attorneys general are taking the position that the definition of express invitation or permission already requires it to be one-to-one, -one. already. Yeah. And that means, folks, that as you listen to the sound of my voice, you don't have one year. That means if they're right, and I don't think they're right, mm -hmm. I think they're wrong. Mm -hmm. But if they're right, it means that you already are making illegal calls unless you are buying only one-to-one -one consents. And no one's come to market with this yet. So this is a huge issue. And this could be potentially retroactive. And Duchess, if this bites, if a court bites on this, which I think is a terrible argument, just from a statutory interpretation standpoint, I think it's a terrible argument. If there's a bite here, what do you think, Duchess? Where does this leave us? It would be catastrophic. It would be catastrophic. Yeah. That's a good word. <laughs> That's exactly the right word. Yeah. Um, Queenie? I mean, yeah. The Litigation is going to go up, 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 up. I mean, Businesses gonna go up, are going to get even more destroyed than they already are. I mean, you're talking about retroactive liability yeah, in the sure. trillions of dollars. I mean, think about how many calls are made. Let's, let's say there's 500 million calls made a month, right, on, on purchase lead. It's actually higher than that. Let's say it's 500 million. All right, that means there's a quarter of a million calls approximately that are made to numbers on the DNC list based upon these leads. A quarter of a million a month. That's three million, mm -hmm. right? Every year, four-year statute limitations, that's 12 million illegal calls. Wait, that's not right. I did something wrong there. Like 1.2 billion illegal calls. Anyway, it's a lot of illegal calls. You have a calculator. <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to do this on the top of my head. It's a bunch of illegal calls. You multiply that number times 500, and you get to trillions of potential exposure uh, in retroactive exposure. And I've already told you, we've got this frothy shark basin underneath us, and now they're being fed uh, I mean, like, it's, it's just like nuclear waste is being pumped into these things. They're like Godzilla sharks now. It's like King, it's like, what, King Kong, did he find a shark? Anyway, it's like a giant shark. Um, a megalodon, that's what I'm looking for. The, they're like megalodons now, how powerful they've become because of these laws. The point is, like, you guys really have to be dialed into this right now. And I think that the, that the NCLC's position is wrong. I think the AGs are flat wrong. I think you can tell that they're wrong because they've never taken that position before. They're just taking it now because the NCLC is encouraging them to do so. If you have a case where the argument is being made, please, if you have a case where the argument is being made that today, right now, it is illegal to buy a lead and call a number on the DNC list, call us. Do not go to battle on this argument alone. There is trillions of dollars at stake. You do not and cannot lose this, okay? The defense bar has to be smart here. The plaintiff's bar is always so much smarter. They work together, they hunt in packs, they're so clever, very, very clever, and they always find the right cases, they find the right opposing counsel. They never bring these arguments against us, right? They always wait to find who they think to be the weaker links out there, and they go after them, okay? If you get picked on, don't be out there alone. Team up with the powerful Troutman Amin team. We will help you. We are happy to help because we need good case law on this. Uh, we're going to wrap up. Pooja, thoughts? Nothing. I'm ready to get to my party. Oh, my God. <laughs> we're ready to go to the party. Oh, they're dancing. They're dancing back here. Uh, Duchess, Countess, what do you think? 
All right, you four, get over here. Let's do a little <laughs> dance. Uh, we love you all. Thank you so much for, for being with us in 2024. We look forward to seeing all of you uh, next year in 2024, and we love you, and thank you, and uh, happy holidays. Happy, holidays. Yeah, happy New Year. Woo!